Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Raucous Caucus, a game show based on the 2016 election on Adelaide's own Channel 44. <laughs> at its finest and we would like to thank the tens and tens of you out there for tuning in for tonight's show. <laughs> We promise it won't be as long or as painful as this election season because a seven week election campaign is brutal. I mean nowadays you're not even Prime Minister for that long. <laughs> oh and the debates. We had the two major party leaders tee off on Sunday in an hour of my life I can't get back. In what was one of the bleakest events of the election so far, Shorten couldn't even seem to stand up straight. He was just leaning on his lectern like he'd been physically wounded and, and Turnbull was just waving his arms around in a desperate attempt, I'm pretty sure, just to stay awake. Because <laughs> debates are meant to be a good chance to get into the nitty gritty of politics and see some real fight in our leaders. Not a chance to get bored and witness the verbal equivalent of a glove slap. <laughs> And just when it was shaping up to be a week of bland debates, ladies and gentlemen, enter James Matheson. Yeah! <laughs> the former Aussie Idol uh, host is planning to contest Abbott's seat and is looking to gain votes by using the methods of previous idols. Matheson will mention his disabilities as well as past <laughs> substance issues and hardships with being a single mum. <laughs> Now, there's been uh, a lot of talk of Labor black holes at the moment in regards to the spendometer. Uh, so let's discuss the true black hole in this election. And that is the one between Barnaby Joyce's brain and his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Look, we all had a giggle at the Johnny Depp gear, and especially because now it seems like he's a massive flog. But, uh, <laughs> but the asylum seeker versus cow thing would almost be funny if it wasn't for the fact that he's deputy PM. <laughs> the only reason I can see Joyce being the deputy is so Turnbull can look smarter. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's like when you hang out with your unattractive mate to make yourself seem hotter. <laughs> So now, in an attempt to make myself look hotter, let's meet our teams. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Raucous Caucus! Anarchy. What Anna puts in her lock. Swing vote. When you choose the big band over the four-piece. Capitalism. How my mum texts. Let us decode this week's election with your host, Laurie Bell, and backstabbing backbenchers, Mike Klimczak and Pat McCaffrey. Recorded live at the Rhino Room in Adelaide, this is the Raucous Caucus. Welcome to the Raucous Caucus, the game show that puts the lull into hashtag Ozpol. Uh, coming to you from the Rhino Room in the heart of Adelaide. My name is Laurie Bell. Each week during the election campaign, two teams fighting for the left and right will battle it out to see who's got the numbers where it counts on the scoreboard. Uh, joining us always are our wonderful uh, team captains wearing the knife-proof back armour for the left. Please welcome <laughs> Patrick McCaffrey. <laughs> outsourcing his answers to Asia for the right, please welcome Mike Klimczak. <laughs> now each week our captains are joined by a special guest from the world of politics. Our first guest is an academic and progressive commentator. Please welcome Green Senator Robert Sims. <laughs> She is a journalist and broadcaster who made the jump from hack to flack from the world of PR. Please welcome Caroline Winter. Okay, guys, let's chuck this election bus into gear and get moving, hey? It's time to play. <laughs> Tasmanian Independent Senator Jackie Lambie is one of a few crossbenchers likely to keep her seat in the coming election. Best known as someone who speaks her mind, uh, Jackie is living proof that there's a fine line between madness and inspiration. The game is simple. Each team is given a part of a real Jackie Lambie quote and then they have to pan the gold for in her stream of consciousness oh christ and, 
<laughs> and tell us what the senator from the Apple Isle is really talking about. Mike, your team gets first bite of the Granny Smith. Who is Jackie Lambie talking about here? It's addictive. It's like, oh my God, here comes a wrinkle again. <laughs> oh. Is she talking about A, Botox, B, an all-you-can-eat buffet at the local pub, <laughs> or C, speed dating senior citizens? <laughs> ah. <laughs> okay, look, I'm, I'm feeling A. I'm going I'm, C. You're going C? <laughs> it's not starting out well at all. You reckon she's just addictive to speed dating senior citizens? Hands up who's not. <laughs> uh, look, uh, my, my guess says C. Caroline says C. I'm locking in C. Are you happy with C? No, not really. No, no! <laughs> I've just got nervous now. You just got nervous? We're locking in A. You're Botox. locking in A. Yeah. Botox. And that is correct! Yes! <laughs> Patrick, see if you can make sense of what the old lamb chop's on about here. <laughs> I don't support blank because they are my sacred religious traditions. Is she talking about A, halal certification, B, gay marriage, or C, pizzas without pineapple? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd like to defer actually, because you work with Senator Jackie Mammy, so you actually might have some kind of insight into uh, the t twisted genius that is Jackie <laughs> <laughs> yes. um, yeah, so what, what, what's your view? Is there D or of the above? Is there, is there <laughs> I'm, feeling, I'm feeling the pressure now. I think it might be A. You reckon halal, so let's, let's go I think it a. could be A. Okay, let's look in a. a. Well, unfortunately, guys, oh, no. it was oh, B, gay no. marriage. Oh, no. I should know that's my portfolio yeah. as yeah. well. Yeah. <laughs> that, one, Sorry. that one is on you now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so Mike's one, Patrick's Neil, Robert's negative one. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Mike, back for more. What's Australia's hardest working mum? on about this time. Yes, I do like Blake. I think he has very strong leadership. Is she talking about Clive Palmer, Vladimir Putin, or Colonel Sanders from KFC? Now I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> you can eat Putin. <laughs> I'm thinking Vlad. B, yeah, I think so. Yeah, Vlad, but only because she might have thought they were talking about Dracula. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well with that it is Vladimir Putin. <laughs> okay, Patrick, your side gets the last slice of the lamb roast. What's Jack Jack on about now? <laughs> I quite like him personally. I like having cups of tea with him. I don't know what he puts in his cups of tea, but they always come out there with a big smirk on my face. <laughs> I don't know what the answer is, but I'm heaps keen to find out. <laughs> is he talking about A, Clive Palmer, B, Malcolm Turnbull, or C, her youngest son? <laughs> No, it's not D. Bill Cosby, is it? Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I'd ask Rob, but you were wrong last time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, uh, I actually think the answer might be B. Malcolm Turnbull drinks a lot of tea. Um, yes, I think that's true. And he yeah. smirks as well. So that's true. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's getting more terrifying as he yeah. actually <laughs> yeah. is, isn't it? Yes. Uh, so yeah, let's go with B, Malcolm Turnbull. And you're correct, it is B, oh. Malcolm yeah. Turnbull. Yeah. Points check at the end of, uh, of that round. One point to the left, two points to the right. <laughs> Very worth doing. Well, it wouldn't be Australian politics if we didn't have a wacky independent holding the balance of power in their terrifying fringe issue claws. Whether you like cars heaps, just feel a bit icky about brown people, or <laughs> want legal marijuana to treat your Xbox addiction, <laughs> there's a place for you on the Senate's crowded ballot form. And here on the Raucous Caucus, we're no different. Tonight we're joined by a young independent wildcard who could literally decide who wins the game. Who will she choose to side with? Only time will tell. But best of all, she doesn't even know what her policies are yet. Please welcome <laughs> Emily Grace! Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so Emily, you're a local stand-up comedian and a pilot, is that right? That is right. One of the highest comedians. Um, <laughs> okay, well we've given you an envelope and in that envelope is the name of your party and its platform. Can you open it up and tell us what you're fighting for? 
Uh, so I am fighting for the Save Our Endangered X Reality TV Stars <laughs> party. Logies for all, regardless of talent. <laughs> Okay, uh, so what's your party's platform? Uh, so we're very passionate, Laurie, about uh, creating a captive breeding program for the survival of our <laughs> ex Big Brother contestants. <laughs> uh, we would like all commercial radio jobs to be given to ex reality TV stars. <laughs> Love you, Nova. And for a national <laughs> apology, <laughs> we would like a national apology to Shannon Knoll for his stolen Australian Idol title. <laughs> contribution to our vibrant democracy. Uh -huh. Emily Grace! <laughs> politician likes an embarrassing photo, but here at the Raucous Caucus we will not tolerate the censor's knife. This game is simple. We show our teams a series of redacted photos. Teams, you buzz in when you think you know what's been hidden by the censors. Hands on your buzzers and here we go with our first photo. What has been covered up on the This Labor Party tweet? Left. Yep. Uh, oh no! Correct. <laughs> Well, like, correct me if I'm wrong here, but I think this, this was a shocking social media fail because I think it's a picture of, it's not a bunny rabbit? Because it's about animal welfare and it's like a, a bunny, I'm pretty yeah, sure. they don't have a good policy on it, so it sounds yeah. like it'd be a bad <laughs> yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's yeah, have let's a look, guys. Let's see. Oh! Ah, very good. <laughs> okay, on to the next photo, guys. Who or what is being covered up in this scene? Two police officers dragging someone away. Who they I want to say Barnaby away? Joyce. <laughs> we can all dream. Yes. <laughs> all right, can we, anyone, anyone got a guess? No, I got nothing. Got nothing? Okay, guys, it is in fact, it's James Matheson! Oh. <laughs> the former Australian Idol co-host is being arrested after protesting against the hundred-year-old trees being cut down to make way for a light rail. And yes, he is challenging uh, ex-PM Tony Abbott's seat of Warringah. To vote for James, simply text James to 1300. <laughs> Let's push on, guys. Uh, what's Bill Shorten keeping under wraps in this pic? Oh, left. Yeah? I actually do. I, I'm pretty sure that is the retired senator for the Northern Territory, Nova Paris. Yes, uh, I think so. Yeah. 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 It is, in fact, Nova Paris. Well done. Yeah. 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 Final question. Who or what is noted dog threatener Barnaby Joyce scowling at here? <laughs> oh. He's in my key. It's like he's swallowing his own face. <laughs> it's a, I think it's a what? Is it an animal of some kind? I don't. Two dogs belonging to a movie star. Okay. We're, we're going to go left. We're going to go two dogs. We're, gonna, we're right. We're gonna go left. Oh, we're right. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to have a go, mate? Well, they, weren't they? Yeah, oh, they, they said left, so we get a go. Yeah. Uh, I think it's like it's like an alpaca or a llama. Isn't it? Yeah, yeah, I, it's, I, it's I one think of you're right. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah, it is. In fact, guys, it is an yeah. alpaca. Oh. <laughs> Joyce, uh, of course, made international headlines this week when Johnny Depp broke his silence on the infamous apology video and his soon-to-be ex-wife Amber Heard uh, after narrowly escaping jail time for smuggling their dogs into Australia. On the upside, though, the government has now has a now anti-immigration catchphrase. Instead of stop the boats, they're now promising to keep out every man and his dog. <laughs> <laughs> Patrick and Robert, they are on a solid four points. And Mike and Caroline are on two points. <laughs> now, Caroline, your family migrated here from, uh, migrated to Australia from Scotland. Is that's, that right? That's right. Yeah. That's right. And, uh, and when you were eight years old, you were hospitalised, were you not? I, I was. I was. Could you... Maybe tell us a bit about <laughs> what happened. Um, look, um, 
I had a really irresponsible grandfather. <laughs> um, I think it's fair to say. <laughs> he, um, he was outside, um, being from Scotland, was outside sunning himself and while working on his tan, wasn't looking after his granddaughter, who was inside, um, attacking the uh, fruity Lexia on top of the bar fridge while watching the Brady <laughs> Bunch. <laughs> Eight years old, hospitalised for sucking back a goon sack. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I, th I think it, I proved my worthiness of, as an Australian there. <laughs> <laughs> now, Robert, there wouldn't be any of that sort of shenanigans in the Greens, surely? No. 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 <laughs> there wouldn't be. But look, I have to say, I'm a terrible Cadbury, so one or two drinks, I'd be knocked out. I couldn't try any of that. <laughs> that would really knock me out. Yeah, well, you need to play in the big leagues with the eight year olds. <laughs> <laughs> in a world of politics, nothing is more powerful than a survey. Poll results have ended careers and shaped the face of elections. But how predictable is the will of the people? The rules of pole dancing are simple. Our teams will sort the fact from fiction and tell us what the following poll results, uh, whether or not they're real. Mike, you and Caro get first stab at this. <laughs> According to a recent Sunday Mail survey, a whopping 76% of people dismissed what as science fiction? Is it A, manned flights to Mars? B, driverless cars, or C, Microsoft developing an AI chatbot more offensive than Mark Lane. <laughs> Uh, a lot of people don't know that Mark Latham is actually an AI chat. <laughs> <laughs> we have driverless cars. Yeah. Um, Let's maybe just pick an answer. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon A. I reckon a. 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 a? Yep. Man flights to Mars, it's wrong, oh. it's driverless oh. cars! Oh. And Sunday <laughs> mail readers called them horseless carts. <laughs> <laughs> over to you guys. A recent poll conducted by ABC's The Drum confirmed 86% of Australians wanted a Royal Commission into what? A. Misconduct in the banking and financial sector. B. Drugs in sport. Or C. Arnott's catastrophic misconduct introducing the new and improved shapes. <laughs> Yeah, well, I think we can knock out C because I think 86% is not high enough. No. <laughs> I think that would be closer to 100%. Um, yeah, I think you're right. I, th I think it's probably going to be A, misconduct. Okay, let's see how we go. It is, in fact, A, right. misconduct. <laughs> okay, Mike, back to you. What, uh, what do you make of the following? According to a recent news poll, 60% of all voters believe Malcolm Turnbull is A, arrogant, B, in touch with voters, <laughs> or C, a big oh. fan of the Wu-Tang Clan. <laughs> um, Alright, uh, not C. More fool him. <laughs> Arrogant or in touch with the voters? A. A? <laughs> in the most unarrogant way ever. Yeah. <laughs> Let us humbly say A. Uh, humbly say A, it is in fact yes! A. We knew that! We knew that! Yeah! And uh, for the record, just less than half of those polled thought Bill Shorten was arrogant, which is pretty damning considering most Australians still don't know who Bill Shorten is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's push on. Patrick, last question for this round. What do you make of the following? A recent Ipsos poll found just 4% of Australians think the government is doing enough to tackle what? A. Climate change. B. Cheap milk killing our dairy industry. C. Game of Thrones spoilers on Facebook. <laughs> yeah. Or D. The CSIRO and its pesky science. <laughs> See again, I think Game of Thrones spoilers would be a bigger problem for, uh, <laughs> for Australians than yes. for Australians. Uh, Doing enough. You, I think we're going to lock yeah, in. Let's lock in climate A. change. Yeah. You're locking A. Let's see how we go. Yes, it oh. is. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone could link cheap milk to melting polar ice caps, maybe when there's a polar bear in the milk fridge because it's the last cold place left on Earth, <laughs> <laughs> people might take notice. <laughs> <laughs> and at the end of that round, let's see where our teams stand. We have the right on three points and the left on six points. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>
caucus, guys, that after two rounds, our teams of Patrick and Robert, you guys are on a solid seven points, while uh, the right, oh, only three points. Yes. <laughs> OK, it is now time for a Kubra Matata. <laughs> You can't throw a dart at a newspaper these days without hitting a politician in high vis. But it wasn't that long ago when, if a poly wanted to connect with Australia, they donned an Akubra and headed to the bush. And they didn't look ridiculous at all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, tonight we're going to revive that sacred tradition. Our two team captains each have one minute to smooth over this week's biggest media blunder all while dialing the Aussie factor up to 11. <laughs> Boys, are you ready to play a Kubra Matata? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Patrick, you're up first. Tonight it's your job to smooth over the work of the one and only Mr Peter Dutton. Yes, uh, your topic. Illiterate refugees are going to take your jobs and be doll bludgers at the same time. <laughs> Where you go, Patrick McCaffrey! <laughs> feels very natural. <coughs> um, <coughs> blokes and Sheilas of Australia. Uh, I'd like to talk to you about Immigration Minister Peter Dutton's ridgery didgeridoo. Is, it, is that right? Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, comments about uh, asylum seekers who, despite being illiterate and innumerate, are flooding into the great outdoors to steal your jobs. Uh, well, fear not. Uh, this government understands that the true blue Aussie way of life is to get by with the literacy and numeracy skills of a five-year-old without actually understanding how many years five represents. <laughs> and I say to you that this government has a proven track record of protecting jobs for the illiterate and the innumerate as immigration ministers, as treasurers, <laughs> and <laughs> indeed even as prime ministers at one point. Um, and we'll continue to protect those jobs into the future because here's the thing. We understand that there's a reason you left school at year 10. And that's not just because you knocked up your missus, right? It's because, it's because you knew what you didn't need to know. Because you don't need to count past 10 or no fancy words when you know that the best cold beer is this. Vic, sorry. Uh, ooh, ah, uh, Glenn McGrath. more Aussie than souvenir magnets on a caravan fridge. <laughs> <laughs> OK, Mike, you're up next. Here we go. Your topic tonight comes to us via the Labor Party's David Feeney. Negative gearing is bad unless you have a $2.3 million negatively geared house. Take it away, Mike. <laughs> Well, it is a pleasure to be here amongst the good, hard-working folk of Cogdogla. Cogdogla. Just spending the day amongst good, hard-working, straight-up Aussie fam. Just, just salt of the earth, pillars of our community, on whom our economy will... I'm not talking about the backpack and fruit pickers. That's, <laughs> we got rid of them. They're, they're gone now. And now it's time for us to turn our attention to other policies, namely negative gearing. Negative gearing is the policy of rewarding people that have made an investment that returns a loss with a tax break. Now, <laughs> I was born at night, but not last night. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm sorry, but you can't tell me that rewarding people that make bad investments is good for this nation. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, like if, if you willingly buy a $2.3 million house in Northcote, for a loss each year, you don't need a tax break. You need a maths lesson. <laughs> <laughs> and that is why our policy is now, if you have two apples and you take away three apples, you do not have negative gear apples. <laughs> <laughs> over to the studio audience tonight, I'm going to just check in with our independent, uh, Emily. Who do you think swayed your vote there? Look, I'm really uh, interested in both issues. Obviously, if anyone illum enumerate and illiterate in this country that should be getting a job, it is hot dogs. <laughs> <laughs> And I also, um, 
you know, I really wonder what DreamWorks is now doing uh, with the Big Brother house, whether they are negative gearing it, and I want it. <laughs> I really want our uh, reality TV stars to have somewhere to live, so I uh, don't think I'm going to follow you on that issue, and I think I'm going to uh, give it to the left. On oh, the <laughs> Okay, now let's throw it over to the audience though, because your uh, your votes do count. <laughs> <laughs> Very little. <laughs> <laughs> Who thinks that the right had it? Uh, and who think that the left have taken it away? <laughs> And at the end of that, I'm going to give it over to the left. Woo! Like a family first tea and scone social, it's been a wild night. <laughs> but it's now time to put those election buses into overdrive and power across the finish line. The game is simple. Ten questions. Buzz in when you know the answer. Winner takes all. And here we go. In 2010, the election debate between Gillard and Abbott had to be rescheduled so that it did not clash with which popular TV show? Buzz. Mastership. It, that's absolutely correct! <laughs> True, true or false? You, permission to shine on this one. Um, Malcolm Turbill used to keep a dog blog on his website reportedly written by his dog, Goff. Buzz. In the, in the Independent! Uh, false, it was Jojo. <gasps> Correct! Oh. Oh. Yeah. Name South Australia's most marginal electorate. Oh. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, what was that one? Boothby. No, High Marsh. 1.9% oh. oh. uh, to Is the that Liberals. Their score now? <laughs> 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 so, uh, true or false? A malicious Twitter troll account called Real Mark Latham, which routinely attacked prominent true. women. True. <laughs> you got to say left or right. <laughs> <laughs> true. <laughs> it is in fact true. Yes. Uh, it's actually the work of Real Mark, Mark Latham. Who is the longest serving treasurer in Australia's history? Left. Brilliant, good work, and just well done. Well done on learning how the buzzer works. I also did this with my foot. Sure, the sound guy's loving that. <laughs> Which was the first state to allow Left. women... <laughs> really? Why? To allow women to vote South Australia. Uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> High school attended by former Prime Minister Julia Gillard. Right. Yes. Mm, Mitchum Primary. Uh, Dunley Primary. <laughs> <laughs> that one is going to go to you guys. Yeah. <laughs> and the bird in the audience. <laughs> Disgraced former Minister Jamie Briggs holds which blue ribbon South Australia? Mayo. Mayo. Yeah. I'm not from the left, am I? <laughs> 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 Look, if you want to come to a winning team, I would play. Come on. Uh, I thought there was a problem with my buzzer. There's a problem with my guest. So, at the end of that round, the scores are six points to the right. <laughs> Catching up quick, two points to the independents. Yeah. Which leaves our winners, the left, on a solid four. guests for joining us tonight. We'll be back next week and if you want to be in our audience visit www.adelaidecomedy.com My name's been Laurie Bell. See you next time. <laughs>